Hello ladies and gentlemen, Trippy AK back again for another C++ tutorial. And before I move on to the topic called buffers, I want to quickly go over some math things again, really quick. Now I'm pretty sure plenty of you have been trying to get decimal or fractal values. So, I mean fractions, not fractal, but whatever. So, if you were to have an int of, let's say, num of 5, then another one, int num 10. And then some int sum equals nothing. Sum equal num divided by num2. That would be an error, and I have to sign that. So you would think that it would equal 2.5 yet, and I forgot to see out. Sum, what's going on is that the computer knows that 5 divided by 10 is less than 1 and more than 0, but it's just rounding down to 0 for simplistics. So in order to change that, you have to convert all of what says int for your variables at least to float. So float and then float. Now even though these two are floats and then this is integer, you'll still get 0 because you can't convert from one data type to another, which is a good protector for C++, but also it's one of its small downfalls. While in Python, you can do integer divided by a float value or decimal value, and it will return the decimal value. So it's mandatory to make sure that all your data types are your data types. So now we have 0.5. You can make this much more simple by doing what we've done before with the compound statement of num divide equal num2 and instead of this being sum it will be num as you see here 0.5 that was the small math thing that I wanted to go over really quick now onto the main topic which is buffers if you ever heard of the word buffer room before it means extra room or stored room so I don't know if you're playing a starship game and in some buffer room, you want to make sure that you don't crash into your friendly ship's buffer room. So the way that that works in computer science or computers in general is that when we get into a race, the very next topic, I'm going to talk about what you'll see at the moment, which are the square brackets. Right now, you're just going to use a char and it will be my string and then my name has five characters, but I'm going to put in a string of six. Now, the reason why six, because every time you declare a string or have an array of characters, there is one single special character, which is the um, null character or exiting out of the string, which is within the string itself. So if you're to have quotations, it's going to have that special string, the limiter. But right now, we're just going to go over a simple buffer. So if you do see out, enter name, then the way you use the cn get line, cn dot get line, you're going to do my string, and then you're going to give the value of the same thing as this input. Basically, you're telling the computer is that you made a character called my string variable and holds up to six characters. Mine will be five letters plus the delimiter. So right here it says cn dot get line. What am I getting? I am getting a my string, my string. Then it's gonna hold it to six characters. Now, whoops, not be out. See out. You are, and it works the same way as any other variable except it's special because whoops see out oh, oh here we go there we go it's slightly special because it's saying you cannot go over this amount so if I type in David you are David awesome now what if I did um I don't know let's say J E S is I C A that is more than total six characters so if I press enter instead of saying Jessica it says you are Jesse which I mean is still acceptable but it's not 
by standard, you would usually do 40, I don't know, maybe 30, personally, for first and last name. So, if you were to, well, so I gotta change this also. Enter name, I am A W E S O M E. So it fully accepts I am awesome because it takes in at least 30 characters, including the spaces and the single delimiter, which I'll show you very next tutorial, and I'll explain memory also. So the get line is a very special function that allows you to format, literally format, how many characters are allowed to, to come in. Then to see out or to print out on a screen, you don't really need to do anything special. So pretty much that is how buffers go. Now, buffers aren't used a whole lot, but I mean, if you're making a game and you don't want someone to run off the screen with, I don't know, whole jibber jabber of characters and randomness, then you could most certainly do, I don't know, probably between 20 and 30 characters at max. Because I mean, if you have someone with like 100 different letters running around on a full scale Halo screen or Call of Duty, whatever, there's going to be a lot of mess. Um, for now, that is all about buffers, and I'll see you next tutorial.